Hi everyone, welcome to our channel Science Made Easy. In this video, we will talk about wave function. So let us start with the definition of wave function. A wave function is a mathematical function which represents the state of quantum mechanical system and it contains all of the valuable information regarding the system. Generally, we represent a wave function by psi or phi. If I elaborate more, then in position space, a wave function can be represented as psi x. Or if I elaborate more, then the wave function represented as psi xt, that is the wave function of the, of the system at position x and at time t. So whenever a function is introduced, we need to talk about its physical significance. So does the wave function have any physical significance? No, the wave function doesn't have any physical significance. The wave function psi is a complex function. And the quantity that has the physical significance is not psi, but mod of psi x square. So if I represent a function as mod of psi x t ka whole square, so what does it represent? It represents that uh, the probability to find out the particle at a particular position x and a particular time t. If I do a thing on this function as like we have mod of psi x t ka square and I multiplied it by dx. So what does it represent? It represents the probability to find out the particle in a small interval dx as I multiplied it by it, which lies between x and x plus dx. Now, if I do one, one more thing on this function, such as I integrate in a limit x1 to x2, then it represents the probability to find out the particle in a region between x1 to x2. So, psi doesn't have any physical significance but mod of psi does have the physical significance and it represents the probability to find out the particle. Now, is every wave function is, is every complex function is wave function? No, there are certain condition for a well behaved wave function. So the first condition for the well behaved wave function is that psi must be finite in all space. So if psi is finite, then mod of psi square will also be finite. That means the probability to find out the particle at a particular position in space will also be finite. So let us consider the opposite of it. Let us consider that psi is not finite at a particular position x and a particular time t. Then mod of psi xt square will also be not finite. It means it will be infinite. That means the probability to find out the particle at this position and at this time will also be infinite. But it is not physically acceptable. So the first condition imposed on the wave function was this. The second condition is that psi must be single valued in all space. To prove this that it is physically acceptable condition, we consider it suppose it. Let us consider psi is not single valued. Then mod of psi square will also be not single valued. Let us consider it has two values like uh, a1 and a2 at a position x and at time t. That means the probability to find out the particle at this position and time will also have two values but it is not physically acceptable. How can a particle have two probabilities at the same position and same time? The third condition is that psi must be continuous in all space. So in quantum mechanics, initially we have defined psi as that it is the function, mathematical function, which contains all of the information about the system. 
so later we will find out that with the help of psi we can calculate many physical quantities like uh, i can calculate energy for which the energy operator is defined as e psi equals to i h cross del over del t so this is the energy operator and if i need to find out the energy i need to solve this equation this is known as energy eigen value so for that i need to calculate del psi over del t that is the first derivative of the wave function and we know that we can calculate derivative of any function only when it is continuous so this condition must be imposed on the wave function the fourth condition is that del psi over del x del psi over del y del psi over del z and del psi over del t they must be finite and single valued in all space if they are not finite and single valued then how can we calculate the physical observable quantities like energy and later we will find out the momentum kinetic energy potential energy velocity and many others so this condition must be imposed on the first derivatives the fifth condition del psi over del x del psi over del y and del psi over del z must be continuous in all space so like we have calculated energy similarly we can calculate kinetic energy also for which the operator is kinetic energy operator is minus h square upon 2m del 2 psi over del x square if i consider in one dimension that is i need to calculate the first derivative of the wave function and first derivative can be calculated calculated if this sorry the second derivative can be calculated if the first derivatives are continuous and the last condition on the wave function is that the wave function must be square integrable in all space square integrable in all space that means if i need to i need to square the wave function as it is complex so we just multiply the wave function by its complex conjugate that is psi dot psi star and it is mod of psi square so i need to do square of the wave function and i need to integrate and if i consider the all space then the limits must be minus infinity to infinity and it must be square integrable that means its value must be finite if we closely look at this quantity then we can get that it is the probability to find out the particle in all space so probability cannot be infinite it must be finite so for which this condition must be imposed on a well behaved or we can say that a physically acceptable wave function now do the wave function have a unit yes why not let us look at it so as we know that the normalization condition the normalization condition on the wave function says that the probability to find out the particle in all space must be equal to 1 that is there must be the particle in the space that we have considered so this is the normalization condition that is my integration of minus infinity to infinity mod of psi square dx is equal to 1 and if i write i can also write it as minus infinity to infinity psi star psi dx equals to 1 so if i closely look at this equation then i can find out that 1 is a number it doesn't have any unit that is the right hand side is unitless then left hand side must be also unitless but here we have two quantities that is one is mod of psi square and other is dx if i consider it in position space so in position space if i have considered it is as it as one dimensional then it has the unit of distance that means mod of psi square have a must be must have a unit of 1 upon distance 
so it is the unit of square and if i consider the unit of psi then it will be 1 upon root of distance and if i consider in two dimension then it will be the equation will be like minus infinity to infinity mod of psi square dx dy this is in x x limit and this is y limit and it is equals to 1 so it has the unit of distance distance so it is it has the unit of distance square so mod of psi square must have the unit of distance square ka inverse yani ki 1 it means 1 upon distance square that means psi has a unit of 1 upon root over distance square in two dimension so from here we can just generalize it in one dimension it is distance 1 upon distance to the power half and here it is in two dimension it is 1 upon distance to the power 2 by 2 in two dimension in three dimension the unit is 1 upon distance to the power 3 by 2 and if I consider n dimensional space then in general the psi has a unit of 1 divided by distance to the power n by 2 remember here we have we are considering the wave function in position space if the wave function is momentum space then this unit will be 1 upon momentum to the power n by 2 i hope that this video will be helpful for you if you like it then please like share and subscribe our channel thank you